Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Shake Sales. My name is Sujan Patel. I'm the founder and CEO of MailShake. Today, I've got Eric, the self-proclaimed outbound PhD, um, and he's the founder of Growth Engine X and really just a badass outbound sales cold email um, uh, expert. So let's jump in, Eric. Uh, you know, we're going to talk about the elephant in the room, AI and outbound sales. How do, how do you leverage it? You know, I know you've got, you know, hundreds of clients that you, you've you helped in, in, in the years. Like, what are you guys using? How do you leverage AI today? Yeah. And so the one that I think that's the question that's on a bunch of sales leaders' minds right now is how to be using AI. And so what I tell everybody about, because I see all these posts of people saying, hey, we've split tested using AI in our emails and not using AI and not using AI came out ahead. And then whenever I ask them, I say, you know, what did you use AI for? And then they say, well, it, you know, we used it to summarize what their company does for. And then we were reaching out to them. And I said, yeah, okay. So that's not going to do it. And so whenever we're using AI in emails, we're not doing it to talk about their college and university. We're not doing it to talk about their past work experience. We're not talking about using AI to, you know, niche down on their job title or anything like that. We're using AI to take the time to send the same email that somebody would manually send, except AI is doing it. So for instance, if you Every time you reach out to somebody, you check to see if they mention a certain keyword on their LinkedIn profile, and then you see what that company sells. And then between what their keyword is and what they sell, you say, you say something about that. AI is very good at coming up with those same similar sentences. So instead of somebody manually writing that, you can you know do that for everybody. And so um, one of my favorite applications for AI is when you have a horizontal software where you can help defense businesses, you can help small businesses, you can help enterprises, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. We use AI to take a look at their website and say, specifically, I think this can help you save time on your billing so you can focus more mm -hmm. on fitness enthusiasts or, or whatever it might be. So the, our big hypothesis on how we use AI in cold email essentially is just, what is it? what would you say if you were to manually send an email? And then how can you work backwards from that and say, the same thing as well. Love it. Yeah. So you're really being hyper specific um, around like what to use AI for and try to find, okay, a problem or uh, a, a specific thing versus use AI to write this email or whatever. Right. Cause I 100%. think that's like one oh one, and what you really do when you do that is really get a better template, not a personalized email. And, so, and that's another thing I tell everybody all the time too is, so we are using AI to write in an email, maybe five, sometimes it's just one word, uh, but sometimes it's five to 12 words in a sentence. And that's, that's it. And because I agree with you, you don't need AI to write the entire email for you. One, there's too much odds that it's going to be such a crazy email and you're not going to be in control of it. And two, you mm -hmm. don't need AI to write your call to action. You don't need AI to write your social proof statement or, or anything like that. Those are all going to be the same most of the time. You need, again, when you're manually researching a company, what are those things that you put in where, okay, so if the your case study sentence isn't going to change, what else are you rotating in and out that, and that's where AI is going to be changing things. There's tools like uh, Lavender and Twain and, you know, these things that are kind of popping up. We've built one, Reggie AI as well. We've built one internally too, that they help you get that template down. And so you're right. Like you could get that template with AI and then approve it with a human, but we're really focused on the one to 12 words that really need to be manipulated, not the entire email. That makes sense. And, and is there a specific, like, are you personalizing like the first line? Are you, is there a specific part of that email that you're trying to work on or is it just, it doesn't matter or it's not. Yeah. So it really doesn't matter. Like I said, it's just always, what would you do manually? Right. And so, so it's very few times that we personalize the call to action. I, I think basically if you're in the, the cold email world, everyone can kind of agree with like, 
a four step email is basically like a why you, why now? So like, how did I find you and why am I reaching out to you right now? And then something in the second and third email, it's something about your offer and something about proof that you've helped somebody else and they can kind of switch any way you want. And then some kind of call to action. I would say most of the time we're using it to personalize the first line. And then we will use it to personalize the third line to like show them uh, that's probably the most used AI template we have in the agency right now is we'll, we'll say, you know, I, I really am reaching out to you because I think we can really help you. And then we'll just insert, like, we'll train the AI on what our company does, and then we'll train it on what their company does. And then just you know, manually write three to four sentences about how we would want it to look on examples so that we could get like a third sentence that looks like really like we just looked up this company and I truly believe we could help you talk to more firefighters or we if, if it were Mailshake, right? Like, or mm -hmm. talk to who, whoever needs to run cold email campaigns, you would just break it down and say, you know, you could use this so you could spend more time prospecting to and then insert a target segment, right? So it doesn't really matter where it is. Sometimes we use it in the subject line, it, it's kind of goes all over, but uh, for the most part, it's either the first line or that specificity about how we can help them, if, whether it's not the second or the third line. Love it. Love it. I think that's very, so I, I, you know, I know what you're saying is like not revolutionary, but it is the devil is in the detail. Like you have two areas where you're using AI versus how do I like any, most sales companies now or most sales reps or teams are like, let's go use AI to write this email. And that's going to give you pretty shit results because think about where AI is building. So you're using AI, let me back up. You're using AI to really augment human effort, right? Um, and, and with the specific criteria, like in the intro of like really getting that person's attention, why you, and then like, where's the proof where like, and that's really tailoring it to that, whatever that person really might be interested in. Where most people are looking at, AI is like, write me a template. AI builds models off of shit online, right? Yeah. If you don't like, let's be realistic. Templates probably haven't worked well since the first day that article with the template was published, right? Like it's just, they're probably better like frameworks than they are templates, but AI is using templates to grab the actual, write the actual email. So you're using a flawed model from the start. Um, if you're not specific with AI, right? Like, Hey, go write me research this person. What are pain points? Um, and then test those pain points. I think it's still the same human effort, but now you're using an AI in AI instead of the actual human to do all the work. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I totally agree with you there. It's trained. I'd like to tell people it's trained off of all of the garbage email templates that HubSpot has ever produced to say, yeah. oh, this is how you write a cold email or something like that. And so, yeah, definitely not for the entire email. I found maybe people would find this useful. Um, I don't know about everybody else, but I find John Barrows and uh, Josh Braun to be some of my favorite cold email copywriting guru expert people. And so anytime we're doing AI prompting, I'll confirm with whatever AI I'm working with that they know who John Barrows is or Josh Braun is. And then I'll say, okay, take on the likeness of, of them. And it improves the emails dramatically. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that again, like you're taking on the person's personality of which the, an AI can chat GPT or whatever you're using can build off of what they see versus the building off. Like, AI using AI to write a whole email is like writing a shittier template, right? Yeah. It's yep, like a, yep, a yep. flawed, a flawed template. Like it's just a flawed strategy and the best iteration of a flawed strategy is still failure. Yep. Um, so, so we're, I mean, you know, I think that, I think, you know, we're going to end it with that because I know this is not a long, long episode, but those are two big things that people can take away today. Right. So, the last tip you just shared was like, you know, you take take those two. But is John Bears, who is the second person? Uh, Josh Braun. Josh Braun. You uh, you know, ask AI to write in that in, in their in their in their uh, personality or kind of based off what they share. Um, it's very, very impactful. So, Eric, where can people go to follow along and also tell me a little bit about, about Growth Engine X? 
Yeah, super appreciate it. And thanks for having me on for this. Uh, so you can follow along probably on LinkedIn is the best. I mean, on YouTube, I also put out a free course on everything outbound and clay and just everything I know about uh, outbound. So on LinkedIn, you can just search my name, Eric Miloslowski, and the same thing for YouTube. And uh, we actually ha currently have a wait list for our agency right now. So if you just go to the uh, website or you go to YouTube or LinkedIn, wherever, and you just click on visit the website, it'll take you to the wait list. And, uh, you know, we can pick you off the wait list from there. Love it. Awesome. You know, you're doing well when you have a wait list. Yeah.